I want to introduce briefly, give us this day, the film that you are about to see. Now, it is kind of an odd film for a number of reasons, but uh, let's begin with the basics. We see here some of the same characters that appear in Christ in Concrete, but the plot, the storyline, is not based on the novel, except for the ending, and we'll see it. Oddly enough, when you have a film version, normally it is an adaptation of the text, and the director and uh, uh, the script take some uh, liberties with uh, the narration, with the stories and the characters, and that's normal. In other circumstances, you find uh, films that, in a way, are the continuation of the narration in a novel. That's happened uh, in many circumstances. Hollywood finds uh, a book that has uh, success, and then normally the, um, there is a version, and then there is a continuation. Okay. Now, this is different in that it is a prequel meaning that the events represented in this film are actually before the events that are narrated in the book. And that is the weirdness, number one. Second, if you read the book, and I hope you did, at least to the first chapter, you encounter the um, protagonist, Jeremio. And Jeremio is an upstanding person. He is the foreman of this gang of Italian bricklayers. He has seven children. One is about to be born. He has a wife. He, has a, he is buying a house uh, the very same day. So he is an outstanding individual within that community. And, uh, well, you saw, if you read the book, you know, uh, what happens to him. Now, in this movie, the character of Jeremio is very different. It is, a, it is a very flawed character. He is a flawed person, and you will see the events. So, the two characters are not the same. At the beginning, you will see that uh, it says, treatment based on the novel by Pietro di Donato. Well, I don't know if it's really a treatment. I think that they just created, took, took a character and uh, uh, created a new story, a completely different story around him. The very end of the movie is, corresponds to the very end of chapter one that you just finished reading. If you read it, you know what happens at the end of those 12 pages that I assigned. And interestingly enough, or that is the connection with uh, the, uh, the book, the movie ends with that very scene in all of its graphic details. So don't assume that because we see Jeremio being drunk, blah, 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 in the film, he will be the same person in the book. Well, actually, you know what happens to him. So, But every time that people refer to him in the book, there is always a sense of admiration. So there are two different stories, basically. Other strange things, well, I don't know if it is strange, but uh, um, this film was shot in England, in London, because the writer, the director, and probably the producer, had been blacklisted uh, in Hollywood. What was the blacklist? In the 50s, during the Red Scare, the McCarthy period, uh, Joseph McCarthy, senator from Wisconsin, who launched the Anti-American Activities Committee, Senatorial Committee, they investigated everyone that they suspected, quote unquote, of being communist or associated with communists. A lot of people ended up on the blacklist and could no longer work. The most famous blacklists concerned Hollywood and entertainment, um, and that forced people to 
uh, use fronts if they wanted to work. They could not produce, they could not work in Hollywood under their own name. So they were under assumed names or they had other people fronting for them. Actually, there is a very interesting, very well done film by Woody Allen called The Front. Uh, it's not the typical Woody Allen comedy. It's 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 a good film and deals exactly with that particular uh, with one character, uh, probably fictional, um, that goes through those vicissitudes. Now, in reality, the McCarthy years, the anti-communist paranoia, um, had a lot of victims uh, more in academia than in Hollywood. Hollywood obviously has got much more resonance and visibility, but um, thousands of uh, um, university professors were fired for suspicion of being uh, associated uh, with the communist movements or labor movements. Um, they were called f fellow travelers. Okay, that is the historical aspect of this film. If you want to find out more about McCarthy years, uh, just Google it and you'll find lots of information. Another detail about this film, it's the technique. Whenever you see uh, cityscapes, streets, wet with rain, dark at night, black and white in particular, this is a typical style of this called film noir which is a French term, noir is a French term, means black. So these are the dark films. And uh, they normally have these atmospheres, you know, they're shot at night with very dark and very sharp uh, shadows. Um, <laughs> if you have seen, there are several detec detective uh, films in this style. And it's supposed to give you a certain, um, to elicit a certain emotional reaction. So anyway, watch the film, enjoy it. Um, you can pick up a variety of uh, Italian or Italian-American elements, some references to general culture, to popular culture, some specific references to the culture of Italians. I think the most uh, significant moment is when Jeremio in the film chooses his wife the way he does and uh, the mechanism behind that uh, and then it goes from there that's all i have to say enjoy the film and pay attention to the elements that again reflect or interpret and represent italian-american culture and that's all i have to say